Stop investing your money in silver and gold. <laughs> I mean it. This is no clickbait title. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. You really do need to stop investing your money in silver and gold. Many of you are new to my YouTube channel. I have grown quite rapidly, uh, three years now, as of this month, August. But some of you new to my channel have no idea what I mean by stacking the Yankee way. Maybe that's the first time you've even heard that phrase. <laughs> it literally launched my channel back then in 2018. And I'm not going to go into all its tenants, but I am going to drive home one of them. It's a critical gold and silver stacking mindset I am super passionate about. I have repeated many times, and it's this. Stop looking to physical silver and gold as a means to gain wealth. Now, you hear the opposite trumpeted all over the media. Late night TV, online ads, whatever. In these uncertain times, you need to invest in silver and gold. If I could change just one person's perspective on silver and gold through this video, it'd be a success. I don't care how many views it actually gets. Just one person who will reevaluate their stacking, see it for what it really is, not get discouraged like, like this guy. If you think that is a worthwhile endeavor with this video, please hit the like button right now. Okay, it, it really helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps get the word out. And frankly, I am really trying to help people who, uh, who I believe are looking at this stuff the wrong way. And it's not just for old guys like me, you know, 55 year old uh, Gen Xers with an S egg. No, this is for Gen Zs, millennials, people who are just starting to stack, people who maybe make, you know, twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 a year. So, so don't just dismiss this, okay, because of where I'm at in the 30 plus years that I have invested. Gold and silver are poor investments in any traditional sense of that word. Gold, silver, for that matter, platinum, palladium, rhodium, precious metals. They do not cash flow and they do not provide you with any yield. Now, what do I mean by those terms, cash flow, yield? It simply means to derive regular income from an investment of time, energy, or capital that will build your wealth. Think stock dividends, um, income from rental property, private mortgage lending, which I love, um, maybe a monetized YouTube channel, <laughs> even the investment you make in an education that practically enables a good career, or maybe that side hustle that you've poured your heart and soul into and has gone from a hobby to a stream of income. Unless you are a silver and gold dealer, flipping this stuff constantly, it isn't bringing in the cash, people. From a capital appreciation standpoint, it's also not a good investment either, in my opinion. Why? Well, not because the spot price is down. Not because you bought those silver eagles with a huge premium. No. No. But because when silver and gold are measured in terms of currency, like the US dollar, any appreciation of wealth that you see in your stack as the price of silver and gold go up is largely swallowed up by inflation. Let me say that again in a slightly different way. If you are measuring your overall worth of your stack in terms of dollars or euros for you Europeans or in any other fiat currency, as the value of your stack goes up, the worth of your currency is going down. 
It's largely a zero-sum game, people. So that investment that you're making, it's, it's a poor way to grow your wealth. The value of physical precious metals should be seen in terms, not in dollars, but in real tangible assets. Food, clothes, uh, shelter, uh, ammo, gas, other necessities of life. Not against the intrinsically worthless IOUs that our government forces on us, that we have to use because it's mandated to pay our obligations like taxes or other bills. We still need currency, don't get me wrong. However, gold and silver are real money. Even my gold and silver coin dealer, Tim Marshner, knows that fiat currency is not legitimate money. <laughs> at all that cash he's chucking it around <laughs> it's not real money <sighs> so why stack at all why, why buy silver and gold well that is a very good question and it is core to my stacking the yankee way approach physical gold physical silver are first and foremost one thing only insurance that's it they are a means of long-term potentially generational protection against a whole host of real dangers i've, I've likened it to uh, life insurance and car insurance and health insurance fire insurance whatever it is a protection against existential dangers. Dangers that I really, really believe are imminent in my lifetime, potentially in the next 10 years. I've said that many times. And they are not the only areas of protection one needs. In fact, they're not the first insurance policy that you should get, but they are important hedges against several things. And I'm gonna list them off to you really quick. Gold and silver are a hedge against failing governments. The risk of fiscal failure of the United States of America is a real threat. You, you may not believe that, you may disagree with me, that's fine. I am absolutely convinced that we have gone way past the point of no return with our government, our politicians, our drunk on uh, promising complete assurance of prosperity to the masses through economic stimulus, infrastructure spending, cradle-to-grave entitlements, universal income, basically democratic socialism, at no cost to you. Nope. No cuts in spending, no tax increases, you know, except on those nasty billionaires, right? You get everything you want, more and more each year, you know, of course, spiking way up with every crisis that comes for free, courtesy of our federal and state governments, bloated with bureaucrats, plump with pork, fueled by you know, lying lobbyists and crony capitalism. You get it all for free, at least for now. See, that's the deal. They promise utopia and they destroy our liberty in the process. They destroy our standard of living our individualism, our lives. Precious metals can help sustain the wealth that you already have as their fiscal policies fail us. You know it's coming, it, you know it, it's inevitable. Governments fail, even the most powerful government in the world. That's the first way it helps us hedge. The second way, it is a hedge against monetary mayhem by central banks. Did you know that the Federal Reserve is a private organization with a bunch of dishonest member banksters who is systematically destroying our currency? You know, what I find ironic is that the central banks all around the world publicly despise gold while at the same time they privately hoard it. That tells you something, doesn't it? Their out of control printing feeds the fiscal insanity by governments that I just spoke of. They are monetary drug suppliers to the addicts in Washington, D.C. 
the Fed artificially forces interest rates down, keeps them down by force, right? In order to prop up the stock market, the bond market, the real estate market, all those phony you know, employment statistics. They create a fake economy that gives the appearance of wealth both to other nations and to its own citizenry. But people, Americans especially, it's a Ponzi scheme to rule all Ponzi schemes. Third world nations exchange goods that they produce and we consume for our IOUs. IOUs that we can never repay. Modern monetary theory that says you can just print all you want, and not have to worry about inflation and you know, it's here now. The crazy Keynesians have succeeded in solidifying their warped economic philosophy within our central banks. And the people, they don't know what's going on. They just, you know, open their 401k statements. They look at their Robinhood accounts. They think they're getting stinking wealthy. But most people's wealth is just a mirage. What they don't realize is that it's all a machination of the Federal Reserve's immoral monetary policy that eventually ends. And that wealth, it will evaporate in what I think will be an economic shock and awe event. One where the United States loses its coveted global reserve currency status and all our debt from around the world just floods back onto our shores. Precious metals can help protect you from this insanity and help you through it. That's the second thing. The third hedge is a hedge against hyperinflation. Now, some people think that that is just a, a, a fantasy. And, and to some degree, they may be right. There has never been a global reserve currency that has hyperinflated before. I happen to believe that that status will be lost before we hyperinflate. But when it comes to political will to do the right thing versus destroy the nation's currency, I think politicians will inevitably do the latter while they're in power. You know, the right thing would be cut spending, reduce our debt, uh, restore us to sound money backed by something like gold. I, I don't see them doing it. And that's borne out by ancient civilizations like the Greeks and the Romans who made the same choice. Now, you'll hear it said by many that gold and silver are a great hedge against inflation. But that is only partially true. As measured by falling real interest rates, which inflation is a key factor, precious metals do phenomenally well as a hedge. Again, falling real interest rates. However, when it comes to a complete collapse of a nation's currency, hyperinflation, silver and especially gold will help preserve wealth through that collapse and help it emerge intact on the other side. So remember, inflation is where people want more and more of that government, you know, crappy fiat currency, but hyperinflation is where people don't want any more of that currency. In that scenario, this is where you want to hedge your bets. Finally, Gold and silver are a hedge against things like global conflict, natural and man-made disasters, and even civil unrest and societal collapse. Boy, I don't want any of that to happen. But you pray for the best and prepare for the worst, right? Now, of course, other preps reign supreme here. But precious metals do play an important role. So, if you want to make a boatload of wealth, buying physical silver and gold, good luck. Seriously, I mean it. You're, you're most likely going to get discouraged. Trust me, especially in the short term. I do invest a very small portion of my wealth. And when I say invest, I mean really invest uh, in, in uh, you know, various uh, derivative assets that are tied to the price of silver and gold. Things like... Um, uh, Sprott's ETF, PSLV. I like that one. It, it actually, you know, seems to be a, a legitimate ETF 
that truly backs its um, uh, paper assets with physical, tangible silver, one-to-one. And I also do invest in some gold and silver mining companies. That's a significantly speculative investment. So those are some capital appreciation plays that I think will do tremendously well when the spot price of silver and gold eventually take off. But again, that's a long-term investment. And it ain't stacking, people. Gold and silver, physical, this stuff is real money. So stop treating your physical stack of silver and gold as an investment. Think of it as insurance. Stop hovering over your uh, Kitco app or whatever app that you use to, to you know, intensely watch the daily spot price of precious metals. Don't do that. Buy silver and gold for the right reason and don't stop stacking. Well, please like and subscribe and comment on this video, especially comment. Tell me what you think about what I just said. And as always, I hope your day is a-okay.